you know, this new coronavirus, we called it the novel coronavirus because it was new and unknown. But of course, this new virus is doing something very common in terms of creating uh, not new problems, but magnifying and highlighting those. And so as just like we talked about Hurricane Katrina did similar things, Hurricane Maria, now we've had Hurricane COVID, if you will, that's sweeping through. And so the question now is, are we going to act in a real new way to create the safeguards and guardrails to prevent these same people, these same communities who keep bearing the brunt when the next disaster hurricane hits. We've talked about short-term solutions that need to be dealt with for the here and now so people can get to tomorrow. But I also very much look forward to the additional discourse for the tomorrow to address the foundations and the fundamentals that created this overly susceptible, highly vulnerable population that's disproportionately impacted whenever something comes through. I look forward to the ongoing challenging work that lies ahead. David, I will come to you next. Sure, so I, I think we, we need to take urgent action now for the crises we face, but we have to do more. Um, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic is not the last one we will face. And we need to think of what we can do now by, by creating healthy homes and healthy communities and providing opportunities in education and employment so that we can develop herd immunity of a, of a different kind uh, to these social determinants of health so that when the next pandemic hits, we are in a much stronger place. Very good. Um, Barbara, I'll come to you next. And I, I, really, I really have appreciated everybody's uh, comments, your wise counsel. I, I think everyone has all, all of the listeners as well. Um, I do want to note that, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's very important to recognize that uh, there are lessons we have learned uh, just uh, over the last few months. And it's really absurd to think uh, we're not using the information we've already gleaned um, to actually make some fundamental changes. Um, and I want to really highlight, you know, the pandemic has really been on the backs of people of color, as have so many other injustices. Um, and it's really time to uh, not just uh, acknowledge that uh, and produce uh, reports that actually verify uh, information that I think people living in our communities already know. They know their hardest hit and they know that the conditions are unfair and they know that it has nothing to really do with their individual behavior. Um, so, you know, again, we see a lot of sort of let's blame the people who are doing the worst uh, and we should have learned by now, but certainly uh, from, uh, you know, February uh, through what we've seen that without some systemic changes uh, that really uh, get, again, I think what Ngozi said to the root causes uh, around addressing issues related to racism and disproportionality and understanding the unfairness of systems that penalize uh, those among us who have the least resources, the least resources uh, to address a pandemic, the least resources to address uh, financial instability, the least resources to address issues uh, related to uh, really promoting health and well-being for themselves, their families, and their communities. Thank you for that. Uh, Bob, I'm going to you next. Uh, <clears throat> So I'm very <clears throat> hurricane natural disaster oriented. If we uh, describe this for the next six months as a major storm in the Gulf, uh, we would end the partisanship. Uh, 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 Asian fishermen losing everything in a hurricane, Republicans, Democrats get together. We have to help these people through this. We have to realize that certain communities are overwhelmed in the next natural disaster. We have to get them through the six months. But adding homelessness, having people whose kids are scarred for years because they just can't get an educational experience. But we have to stop this discussion about, well, we're doing this, dependent that, to this is a natural disaster. You've done this in other states and areas. Apply it so it's easy for people who are most affected. But at the moment, if you listen to the discussion in Congress, it's too politically polarized. It's not around the Gulf or the wildfires. How do we just make sure people who could die or lose everything are helped? And that, I think, has to change. And it has to change pretty quickly because we're going to have some very serious effects in the next few months if nothing happens. Thank you, Bob. Howard, you get the last word. So Joe, thank you for moderating an excellent panel. And Bob, thank you and your team once again. This has been tremendous. 
<laughs> if you take a step back and ask yourself, how in the world did we get into all this? Uh, the simple answer is that for far too long, our society has undervalued and underfunded and overlooked prevention and public health. All the devastation we're talking about is completely preventable, but it's not gotten the attention and the resources it deserves. So going forward, I would encourage all of our listeners and colleagues who are committed to public health to tackle this aggressively, looking through the lens of the social determinants of health. And that means reaching out beyond the health silo to as many other leaders and colleagues throughout society as possible. The more we can build non-traditional partnerships with housing and education and business and faith-based organizations, I think we can expand what public health is and make prevention stronger in the future and hopefully never get to see the devastation that we're witnessing now. Thank certainly, you. certainly not. Thank you for that. I hope we never see this again. Uh, I want to thank all of our panelists today. Uh, I want to also uh, thank NPR, uh, the Harvard Chan School, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for their support of this project and this webcast. Um, the event is ending now, but you can, can, you can watch it again on the forum website. Uh, um, thank you very much and good day. <laughs>